All right, guys, how are we doing? Welcome to your second practical video. As requested, we're going to go down uh, to the yard, to the stables where my horse is, and we're going to do a little bit with horses today. A few updates as we go. If you haven't followed the Instagram account Layers Made, try and get yourself on there. Uh, it's on the announcements, so have a look at what it's called. Get yourself on because Leia will be putting up things about the animals in the unit during the lockdown. Secondly, these videos are now on YouTube. You can go into East Durham College Lockdown videos and they're all on there. So if you ever need to access them quickly on your phone or you're having trouble doing anything on Canvas, because I know some people have said that they do struggle to get stuff up. OK, just go straight on there and you can watch them. The accompanying task again will be in assignments. Well done to everybody. 27 from 30, so I'm only missing three. Really good. OK, I'm happy with that. The first weeks, we just smashed out the park. So continuing to lockdown, we're, we're doing really well. Let's continue that momentum on. OK. A few things about the Falcon uh, questionnaire, the Falcon questionnaire. The knot, which is the main question a lot of people got wrong. People are saying swivel. Remember, the swivel is what connects the leash and the gestures together. OK, it's the piece of equipment that connects everything. The knot was actually the Falconer's knot. And if you watch the video, if you fast forward through to where I've got them on the glove and stuff, you see I'm tying it round onto the D, the D ring. All right, so you can watch that and you can see how it's done. I will teach you that when we get back and the bird is here in the college and we get things sorted. OK, so that's really important not to know. Uh, the other question is, why is Rango a bit different? OK, it's actually something I forgot to mention. And some people said he loves to swim. Birds of prey don't like to swim. He, he likes to play in the water. You'll fill the bath up to about maybe a quarter, up to a half maximum, with the, up to the length of his leg, OK? And he'll kind of splash around and wash himself. But you never find a bird of prey in the water. If there is a bird of prey in water, like an eagle or a hawk or something like that, it's in trouble, OK? So keep that in mind. And the uh, last thing as well, well done to those that went out and researched this question. What is mantling? So mantling is actually when a bird of prey catches its its food and it'll spread its wings and tail over it to hide it from other predators so that it's its own uh, food. What they do is they eat it as quick as they can and it'll go into something called a crop in the neck. They hold it there, it doesn't digest, and they fly off and they digest the food later, okay? So we'll go all over this again at a later date. So well done to those that went out and did a little bit of research. Congratulations, that's good. Um, overall, I don't think there was a score less than about 80%, guys, so smashed out the park. So really happy with that. So we're going to keep that momentum going for the horses today. The last piece of news that I'll tell you before we uh, leave to go down to the stables is I am going to be heading back into college now. It looks like we're all going to have to be working from site. So if you do want any other um, animals in the unit worked with, let me know because I can just book it out for myself. Go down and make a couple of videos. So no doubt some of you are going to want the exotics. We'll try and get the big snakes and stuff. All right. And make it like, you know, good, interesting, fun. Um, not that our lessons aren't anyway. OK. Pippa, sorry, one second, guys. Okay. Uh, all right, so I am heading back down onto the unit as of Monday. I'll keep you updated with what happens with that, though. It might change. Like I said, we don't know with this lockdown. Everything's a bit new for everyone. Okay. So the plan for today is I'm going to drive down to the yard where the horse is. She's called Sally Ann. She's a cob. She's four, five. I'm just looking at my, is yeah, about five. It's about five years old. So we'll go down, we'll do a quick basic kind of introduction and stuff on her equipment. Then we're going to muck her out. We're going to put her out in the field. We'll put some rugs on her and stuff and we'll just record it. The accompanying assignment will be an assignments on the canvas uh, side with the yellow writing. I know we all know what we're doing, okay? You all have my email. You can all contact me if there's any questions and we'll just go from there. All right, so we're going to head down at the car and we'll see you there, okay? And the other thing, guys, is I know in the videos at the start, I did say that there'll be about 10 minutes and then the falconry video was... 25 i think okay yeah that's my bad i misjudged that massively okay so we're probably looking at about 30 minutes per video um uh you know yeah depending on what's going on but expect this same today about 25 to 30 minutes so let's get down to the car let's go hi everybody so we're here we're at the yard just show you quickly before we go meet sally um just head through. I'm sorry if it's a bit windy. You can hear it all blowing around. We are really high up where the yard is, so show you quickly. Pan around. A bit muddy because it's winter. The fields. Just gonna go head to the uh, stable and introduce you to Sally. I'll see you in a second. So the way we'll do it is I'll show you the horse, and uh, then we'll go over some equipment. We're going to do a full clean stable muck out. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the video, the time lapse one, you can uh, get on that quickly if you want to have a look at that as well. Um, yeah, let's go see her. Let's go meet her. There's one, two. This is Diego. Oh, hello, Diego. Nothing. 
three. And there she is. Hello, sweetie. Hello. So this is Sally, Gypsy Cob. About five years old. Hello. There's a stable. So we're gonna do a quick mock out and then we'll do some health and handling and gear and all that. Okay, so back in a second. So before we start the, the clean out guys, we're just gonna put her up for a little bit so we can get access to the stable. So you all know this. Okay, I know a lot of you have got horses and stuff already. Head collar, dead easy piece, lead rope. All right, head collar goes on the neck behind the ears and then I'm gonna clip the safety bit on, okay? So you watch, straight on. Lift it over, pull her ears through. All right, you see there? I'm gonna come underneath, and we get the clip, and this just clips up here onto this ring. I'll get my hands on it. So there's the clip. I'm gonna pull that on, and that just makes it more secure. You can see it's not too tight. I get my fingers in, it's actually very loose, which is a nice horse. So nice and easy, okay? It's made of leather, so it's strong, clean. You can wash it dead easy. When you're leading her as well, Knuckles facing forward, okay? Never have your hands kind of like this. Never wrap it around your hand, because if she does decide to run, she's going to pull you over. So knuckles facing forward, all right? Nice and secure, okay? So we'll head out in a second. off over the head and she's free to go where she wants all right see it's a bit muddy so head down the gangway to the field we turned around so she's facing the gate because sometimes it's good practice to do this sometimes if you just let her off she runs away so if you face there we go speak the devil so she goes into the field but because I had her face in the gate, she had nowhere to run. So if I took the head collar off and it was half on, half off, and she decides to run, she's gonna take you with her, all right? So good practice to turn them into the gate, close the gate and take it off that way. Okay, so we're gonna head back, all right? Let's have a look at bits and bobs as well, guys. Okay, so we did before, head collar lead rope. Got a little grooming set here, different brushes. We'll go over them quickly later. All right, feed bucket on the floor, dead simple stuff. Hay net, you can see one hung up there. There's a hay net, we'll go over the difference between hay and haylands later. And then we've just got a little box here, just a garden box, get it from B&Q. And this has just got all our gear in. You can see how clean and tidy we are. So different rugs, again, little containers, riding hat, very important. More grooming set, medicines, electric tape. See, here we go. That's what we clean the leather with. Remember, we saw stuff like this on the uh, falconry video. Treats for when she's a good horse. No more lead rope. Been bad. Just the general stuff, okay? All right, so this is ours. And then obviously something you are gonna need. Wheelbarrow, brush, bongo tubs. So we use these for the uh, substrate that we put in. This is a horse rug. These, there's a little lifesaver, this. Fill it with water, and it gets too heavy. Put it on the side, off it goes. Easy to fill up these with that, okay? And as you can see, we're doing a muck out here, so separating, separating the feces from the actual substrate. Dead easy, just give it a wobble around. You see, it's all just poo, all right? We put the clean stuff to the side. Nice and easy stuff to do, in it? Just let us have a look at that quick. Just see, like, great. Lovely, good job. Diego. Actually, what I'll do now as well, guys, is I'll go over, I've got two different head collars. That's right, two. And uh, one of them's completely different because when we first bought Sally, she was a bit of a nightmare to lead out in the fields. She used to pull and drag and, you know, she's a big animal. 
So she used to, um, you know, rag us around a little bit trying to get into the field because she'd never had a proper turnout, which is what we just done when we when we put her out into the yard and she ran up the gangway. So we had to have a special head collar with her and it's like a training head collar. So we don't use it anymore because she's actually really good. So uh, let's go have a look at those. And I can't just flick the camera around so I'll have to turn it off and then start the video again. So we'll go over them now. I'm just going to close the gate. So these are them. This is the first head collar that you saw before, just the leather one. You see where the horse's head goes and all that. So obviously head goes in. That was the safety clip. Remember it comes up on the side so you can control them more. There's the lead rope guys, dead easy. We'll chuck that all to one side. And this is the other one that we have, okay? And it looks a bit of a medieval torture device. I wouldn't recommend wearing it, but you can see it's a similar design. Okay, so I'll just see if I can get someone to hang it up. There we go, I'll just put it on the gate there. Okay, so this is the part that goes behind the ears, same as the other one. The nose comes through there and you can see it's got this metal kind of chain on it, okay? What happens is you put the lead rope on that hook at the bottom and if she tries to pull, I'll see if I can get it for you. Okay, if she tries to pull, hold on, bear with me while I use my finger. Pulls, this would pull down. You've seen it tightens around the nose and it's kind of like a halty for a dog. And there's the clip at the bottom that would come around and clip onto the side for the safety feature of it, okay? So if she tried to run off or she tried to pull me or anyone else leading her, it would tighten around the nose and it would stop her because it would be uncomfortable. And if she did try to keep going, it would kind of pull her head to the side. Do you remember where stood to the left-hand side anyway? So that's how that works. And it's worked really well. We don't actually use this anymore. We had it on her for about a couple months. The first time she tried to run with it on, obviously gave her a bit of a spook because she wasn't used to something tight around her nose like that. Okay. And uh, yeah, and that's really worked wonders. So I'd recommend if you've got any horses that you are struggling leading out in the fields or anything, get one of these, okay? So we'll just pull all the equipment back. I hope we all know what a horse is, by the way. I didn't have to go over. This is a horse. This is a cat. This is a dog. Okay. What's that I hear you ask? Where does all the poo go? Great question, guys. Well, once it's loaded in the wheelbarrow, it comes here. To the muck heap. And then after that, the tractor comes through and it gets too full, puts it in a field and it rots down. And then in the summer or whenever it needs it, really, when the, when the feces is kind of rotted down in the manure, you can spread it on the fields and it's good for the grass. It's all natural fertilizer. Great question, guys. Really, really good. I enjoyed that one. Nice. Might as well get this as well here while I'm, while I'm at it, guys. This is the hay barn. All right, just a wooden shack. I'll show you in a second. And this is where all the haylage and the hay is kept. So that's obviously what the air, uh, what the horses eat. So the difference is haylage is really sugary, sweet. It's very kind of wet to feel and it's very high in energy. So you don't want to feed them it all the time. Whereas hay is kind of the go-to basic feed. I'll show you them now. I'm not going to turn the camera on because it's a bit of a hassle, but this is haylage. You see it's a bit more of a goldeny color. All right, and if you're ever unsure, touch it, smell your hands. Mmm, smells like sugar. And then this is hay. You see it's a lot drier. Okay, see if I can get them both in. You see one looks a little bit wetter. This is a lot drier. It's more of a kind of straw-like feel. So that's just my hand. So well, then I'll, I'll pan right out. There you go. So you can see the difference when it's a far away with the haylage on my right, which will be your left if you're looking at this, I'm pretty sure. And the hay on the other side, all right? This is just the, the, the barn that, that we get it from. Great. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the wheelbarrow back, get in there, do some water, fill that all up. And then I guess uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just keep cracking on. Sound. In it goes. Wonderful, second load. Right, you can see as well what's happening is all the substrates have been pushed to one side. This is actually just like cat litter. Get a close up of it. So that's kind of what it looks like when it comes out the bag. It's obviously a little bit more hard um, and it's more like a pellet. And then it breaks down over time into this kind of soily like substrate. And it's just really good at absorbing wee, urine, feces and things like that. You see it's all been pushed to one side. So we've got these mats down. So we push it to one side and we can check how wet they are. So these look pretty good. All right, bit of mud, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we have a little rack. Oh, a little salt lick for her. Don't know why I touched that, that was gross. 
A uh, little salt lick for her, keeps her occupied a bit in enrichment and also gets some natural salts into her. We just hang that off the uh, rack there, which is what we put the rugs on sometimes, which she has a habit of pulling them off. So we tend to just put them on the side like that. There's a hay net, obviously we'll go over that at a later date. And the wheelbarrow, there's the water. It's in the plastic bongo, so that's gonna get a clean out now as well and fresh water put in it. Sweeping brush, there's the rake. Well, the fork, sorry, not a rake, the fork. This all gets pushed back. Nice and neat. So, wave to the camera. <laughs> oh, it's not my horse, but come on. Hello. This one's called Cassini. Oh, don't nip us. So, kind of, as you're watching this, guys, it's very start stop. I get that because it's just the nature of the job that I'm, you know, wheelbarrows out, horses in and out, this and that, okay, as I'm going over stuff with you as well. It's not really hard stuff, it's all quite basic. But uh, to start thinking about why is this kind of thing important? So, you know, why do we have to clean things out? Think about the Animal Welfare Act. You've seen that in your infographics and in your workbook it's plenty of times. Think about the five needs and just the basic, basic needs that animals need that they live happy, healthy. I said the word need several times there. Sorry, I'm, you know, just going with this. Um, I'll show you a different substrate as well some people use. Okay, and we used to use this, but it's quite hard to clean. Um, I find, hold on, I've just had to grab it. And it's this. Okay, and you get lots of different substrates. This is just one of them. Let's say the one we use is it's like cat litter. We buy it in bulk though, so it comes in huge kind of, you know, huge bags, you know, 10 kilogram bags at a time. We find that's cheaper and it works a lot better as well. Um, everybody's got their own preferences though. So it's kind of up to you. I'm sure some of you guys have got horses. You'll use something completely different. Um, there's a woman here who owns Diego and all the other horses in this, in this block apart from Sally, which is ours. And, she buys her own food in, she buys her own haylage and things in. So it's kind of what you prefer and really what you're using your horse for as well. All right, preferences and stuff like that. So let's go see how far along we are in the cleaning side of stuff. All right. I'll show you some foals next as well, some little baby horses. They're cool. Hey, sweetie. So obviously, guys, this is not a horse. I'm sure I don't have to say this is M. Oh, she's off. Nice pajamas. All right, guys, let's get the water butt filled. So remember I said a nice, easy thing, so that's obviously empty at the minute. This is a life safe if you're in a field and you need to travel the water across. And it's off. So let's get that. All I do is work, 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 work. Nice, easy way to just get some water to the stable. I'm just gonna pick it up because it's empty for now, but we will. Roll it after, I think this holds 40 liters and this is the smaller version one, okay? So you can get huge ones, but they are a good buy. I do recommend them. It's a battery on charge for the fences. What I'm gonna do, and the lid. always make sure the lid's closed guys as well. So this is a good point because you can see we're in the middle of kind of nowhere. All right, hello Marcus, this is Marcus. But because we're in the middle of nowhere, we get a lot of birds. And there have actually been incidents where baby birds get stuck down in these and obviously it's a bit of water in the bottom there they're in overnight and they don't make it so always make sure that you can kind of close the lid off okay so i'm just gonna line that up a little bit more we'll come back to that in about five minutes okay hey net going up i've done very little today gonna be in trouble for that later I do have an injury though, guys. You might have seen my little finger bandage. I'll tell you about that later. All right, but we're just gonna see how she puts up the knot, all right? Because then this will be a, a good thing to learn. And remember, we were talking about the falconer's knot the other, the other week. Up it goes. And then you tie it through itself, guys, just so as the horse is eating it, keeps it up nice and tight and it folds in. There you go. Two seconds, so goes around the hand. Over and through. That's it. And then, oh, no, we've missed. Try from this angle. That's it, over the hand, there you go. And then you lock it off there, just like that. Okay, and you can see, two seconds. Similar to the falconer's knot in a way, and then you spin it around. That just means that the horse isn't chewing on the knot and uh, accidentally undoes it. All right, so, there we go. What have we got today? Hay or haylage or both? Hay. So hay today, guys. Haylage gives a diary. There you go, too much haylage gives a diarrhea, all right? You feel this feels a little bit wet because it's outside, but remember I was telling you, if you're ever confused or you're unsure, smell it. So haylage smells really sweet and sugary. 
So, yeah, easiest way to do it. So just on that, this is Cassini. We met before. I love sweet talk. Cassini loves Sally, but Sally's not bothered about Cassini. She's odd. But you see, okay, hey, Lidge. Hey, you can see the difference. Okay. Spot on. And they're off. Sweet. A little handle, there we go. I'll show you that handle earlier, actually, shouldn't I? Clips in. And there we go, and we're away. We're away again. And then that's just going to fill up the blue water bucket in the stable. Now we've done the muck out, we've done the general, we've got the feed ready. We're going to go get her and bring her in, okay? So we'll crack on with that. What are you doing up there? Hey? What are you doing on your hill? Bribery to get her in, guys. Some treats. Keep your hair color on. Hello. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, you are, by the way, guys. You see, it's made of uh, it's like rubber and sand, so it's nice and easy on their hooves when they're riding. We've been doing a lot of stuff over at the minute. We've been there, no one's really using it, but there we go. You see, she's in. Eating a hay, we're going to stick her pyjamas on, so she's got a stable rug, she's nice and quilted. See, that's going to go on her here. So she's nice and padded and thick, she wears that at night time, especially because it's cold. Straps under the legs, straps on the front, let me just get in and show you. It's got a hood on it, we can leave the hood down though. You can just see, it's just like a belt. Oh, Sally. Dopey horse. It just goes through. And then these go underneath. So you're on the other side. These ones go underneath. And these ones actually go around the legs, but I'll show you where they clips or if they go around the leg. D ring, same as the gauntlet on the gloves. And if they're coming underneath, they hook onto this bit here, okay? So I'll just show you the legs quickly. Keeps it in place, stops it riding up. All right, nice and easy. There we go, we'll get that bit under as well. Greedy horse. See, just hooks in like that. Bippity boo, and she's in. She's got a water, got a food. So, what we'll do, guys, next is we'll do a quick health check. All right, now you all know you've done hundreds of health checks. First place you start, but the nose, well actually first thing you start is behavior. You've been with her all day, so you know she's acting all the way she would. She's a lovely, nice, affectionate horse. She's eating, which is great. That's a good sign for a horse because they're greedy animals. One thing you might notice as well is a lot of horses out there had rugs on, but we didn't have one on for Sally. So if you look at her, she's very hairy. So she deals with the cold very well. Now we still do rug her up when it is really cold, but for an hour or two, she's okay, just the way she is. Anyway, she's eating, so we're going to start a quick health check, okay? So checking her nose, no discharge, especially in the winter. Move up to her eyes, nothing's there, it's great. Her ears, you can have a look in. Checking for mites or anything like that. Again, a bit hard when she's eating, but you see no, no pain, no heat. Try and show you her teeth, but she's, uh, she's eating. So it can be a bit difficult, Let's see if we can get... Oh, look, at there they are, there's the gnashes. So she just wants to eat, so we'll let her do it. We're not going to bother her too much. Remember, check each side as well. Don't just do one. Okay, do two. Nice flow on mane. Okay, we would move down her body, but she's got a rug on. So you could move down, you put, feel your hands. Check her for any heat, anything like that. Check her legs, okay, and you would run your hands down the legs as well. Tail to the side. You move the tail to the side for the anus and genitals. Never pull up, so that's how you hurt the horse. Always move it to the side. Nice quick health check, guys. And uh, you would check, run your hands down the legs, but obviously you've got to be careful because you don't want to, if you know your horse, like we know Sally, she's lovely, she's not going to do anything, but if it's a horse you don't know, obviously, you'd start your hand on the body and then you'd run them down onto the legs, let them have a feel, okay? And then I don't want to pick up a hooves because they're muddy, I'm going to get... I never do. Yeah, never, yeah, never lean on the back of your horse because obviously if they kiss out, kick out, sorry, not kiss out, kick out, 
We can check the hooves if you're happy to do that for me. So checking the hooves, run your hands down. You see which way her back's facing as well. In case she does kick, pick it up. There you go. And if you have a look inside the hoof, if we can get that again, sorry. You can see that's here. This is called the frog. It's very important. You need to make sure that's clean, not red, not swollen. It's not the best light because I'm on my phone now. Um, but the frog actually helps push blood around the body. You need to make sure that that's clean. Okay, so very, very basic quick health check. Obviously, we will do more when I'm there, when we have an animal in front of us. Uh, and we will kind of look at that. But just remember the basics. Start at the front and work your way back. Heat is bad and blood should be inside. Dead basic, okay? We'll have a look at some of the equipment as well, all right? And then we'll start looking to wrap it up a bit. Yes, that's right. Okay, so I'll have a look at equipment. Stop the video. So we've just brought up quickly, guys, as well, um, a few common diseases, all right? And I said we'll do equipment, but actually just thinking off the top of our heads. Uh, laminitis is a very common disease, and it's actually, you can still get it in the winter. Uh, it's, it's where there's too much sugar in the grass and in the horse's body, they're not burning it off. And the sugar deposits in the hooves, and it gets very sore and painful and it can actually cause the hoof wall to um, strip away from itself and it is very sore. Sally did suffer a small bout of laminitis because she wasn't getting worked hard enough. She was getting worked but she still had sugar in her system so we needed to burn it off more. All right, um, And we managed to sort that out for her. But um, what you do is you're going to check for a pulse, behind, which is just down there. Okay, You can just see where the fingers are going in and that will be very hot and there'll be a very strong pulse coming through the hoof and you feel the front of the hoof as well for any heat signature coming off it, okay? Just remember, only if you know your horse, but work gently with horses you don't know and slowly you work at their pace, all right? Look at this, she hasn't moved her head away from food. So laminitis is a very common one. Another common thing that you might see in horses is called colic and that's where they're out, if they've eaten too much and they're running around and stuff, the, their stomach twists around, it's like the inside of the stomach actually twists. Now that can be very fatal, so if you have a horse lying down for a long period of time, you need to go check it, okay? Always check a horse lying down, all right? And with a hairy horse, mites under the mane. Yeah, so checking for mites. There was a horse here that had a few mites and they had to uh, cut, a, cut a mane down, which is a shame, sadly it's got a long mane. So check for little red mites, bite marks. Um, what's it called, sweet itch? Sweet itch. Sweet itch, yeah, so if you find any kind of patches that are missing and if they're rubbing themselves a lot, and there could be mites, okay? And Sally's got quite long feathers as well, but we'll go over that at a later date because you can't really see it. It's, like I said, she's a hairy horse, so we'll go over feathers in the classroom, all right? So there's three easy ones, quite common. Okay, so we'll have a look at equipment now. Hello, sweetheart, I know. So, I'm gonna look at some equipment. It's got my little box of brushes, my grooming equipment we're looking at. Hello. <laughs> she wants treats because there's treats in the box, guys. She'll get one later. So I'll just go over them and I'll put them back in the box. Um, nice, easy one. So combs and stuff like that, obviously, your head collar is your main piece of equipment. Your rugs. There are different rugs as well, I should say. Sorry, that's her. I call them a pyjamas, but it's a stable rug. You see, there's a red one here that we use to cover up our substrate so it doesn't get wet. So this is a heavy-duty kind of waterproof one. So we're going to be using this soon because it is getting colder at night time. Um, and we've got loads of rugs. If you're a horse girl or a horse guy, you'll know you have bags and bags of rugs. I've got three or four at minimum. But let's go over the grooming. So, mane, so that's just for a mane, brushing a mane out, get any knots out, just plastic, dead simple. And this is a face brush, okay? You never use the same brush that you use on the back end for the front end, and that's, that's obvious, isn't it? I mean, come on, so this is for a face. You can see it's got a bit of cream on it where she got a bite a while ago, and we would rub it in nice and gentle. Uh, well, it, around the bite, obviously, we wouldn't put it on, but we would use this to take the mud off and just spread the cream around where the bite was as well. It's nice and soft, okay? Just a detangler, so again, main and anywhere else might need it. We've got a separate one for a tail. This is called a magic brush. This is absolute magic. It's just plastic. It's a bit thick in here. This takes mud off our body, yeah, and it works an absolute treat. This is a general brush. You really um, tail. If, obviously, if we use it on the tail, we wash it. And then we have this, which is a rubber curry comb, and this helps take off layers of kind of fluff and hair that we don't need, so your circular motions, and it takes off a lot of the old fluff and hair because they have a summer coat and a winter coat, so that's really helpful for when they're shedding. And then finally, we have two body brushes here as well, guys, so these are really soft, and we'll use these if she gets a bit bit wet, a bit muddy, we can give her a wash, and then we can use these to kind of dry her. You see it's got a bit of a fur on, a bit of a hair on, sorry, from previous times. 
There are other brushes as well that we use. We can go over them at a later date. All right, um, again, this is just a basic introduction. So that's just basic brushes. Your head collar, remember we've got this one, which is called a Pro Safe Collar. Worked a treat. Wheelbarrows, water butt, bongos, different rugs, you can see there, hay nets. Something I didn't mention about the hay nets, guys, is if you want your horse to eat slower, put a hay net inside a hay net, then it's harder for them to get the food out. Hello. I'll tell you what we'll do, let's give her a treat. See, she knows. Let's give her a treat. When you're feeding the horse, hand flat, so take your fingers, just like that. Get my hand out your mouth, you nugget. There we go, see she actually put my fingers in her mouth, so, but my hand was flat, so it didn't manage to do anything. She's got a little moustache as well, you can see, because she's a hairy girl. All right, lovely. So it's getting windy, it's getting cold. We're gonna start wrapping it up. Just quickly, safety features. Now move your head, please, sweetie. There's your bolt, okay. And then at the bottom you have another lock. It's called the kick lock, okay. So always make sure that it's on, simple. Because horses, especially Sally, when she sees someone she likes, she kicks the door down in the mornings, all right. So that just stops the door coming out. So whenever I'm leaving, I always kick, bolt, that's it. And it just makes me check. Well, yes, two, two words though. So two words, two locks, and whatever one I kick, bolt, done. Check them both, all right, good practice. There are a few other safety features as well. We'll go all the way down. It's getting cold, I'm getting hungry. I wanna go eat some food. Hello, but you see, all got the kick bolts on, the locks. There is a gate as well that needs to get closed, okay? Because if they do get out, you know, we are near a road to pull your gate. Safety features, guys, okay? There we go. So we're gonna head back to the car, gonna get in, and uh, yeah, happy days. So that's the horse done. Gonna drive home now. So uh, check the assignments briefing section on Canvas. There'll be something up there. And uh, it's very cold out there, guys. Um, it's gonna have a bit of fun, but it's freezing. So um, check uh, assignments on Canvas. We'll get everything in over the next couple of days. Send me an email if you need any help with anything. I'll upload this when I get a chance tonight. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. All right, don't forget Tuesdays, Thursdays are your theory days. Check your groups, check your timings, and just take as much on board as you can. If you've got questions about the infographics or the workbooks, they're main things, okay? We really need to work on those booklets. And yeah, and I'll see you all on Tuesday, Thursday, all right? Okay, cheers, bye. So just thought there, guys, um, choices for next week. Unless anybody's got something specific, let's go reptiles, because I'm in the unit, wildlife trapping, so live traps, camera traps, I mentioned that last time, or invertebrates, that could be interesting, so scorpions and tarantulas and stuff, okay? Let me know what you fancy, give me a message on canvas. Before.